So in this video, we'll understand the geometric interpretation of PCA. Again, what is one of the biggest tasks of PCA is dimensional reduction, which means if I'm given data in d-dimensional space, I will convert that into d dash dimensional space such that d dash is less than d, right? This is what dimensional reduction is all about. Now, since it's hard for us to even draw 3D spaces on a 2D blackboard like this, so we'll show you a simple example of how to reduce dimensions from 2D to one dimension, right? So this is my D right now, and this is my D dash. And whatever we learn in this using linear algebra, we'll scale all of that to higher dimensions because we'll apply linear algebraic transformations to convert data from two dimensions to one dimensions. This is much more easy for us to interpret and understand. Whatever we learn in 2D, uh, whatever we learn by transforming data from 2D to 1D, all the lessons will hold in D dash and D, where D dash is less than D. Okay, so let's let's just let's just do this simple simple uh, geometric understanding of it. So let's assume I have I have my data like this. Okay, let's assume I have F1 and F2. Let's assume my data matrix is I have n points 1, 2, 3, 4, n, and I have two features F1 and F2. Let's assume F1 is the blackness of hair. I'm just making up an example here so that you can understand. Let's assume all of this data, all of these individual data points come from Indians, okay? Most of whom just have black hair, right? Most of them, of course, so blackness of hair, let's assume instead of, instead of so suppose this value, let's say, can lie, is a real value. Let's assume this is a real value which represents how black your hair is. Some people may have slightly light black, very dark black, grayish. So let's assume this is blackness of hair, okay? And let's say F2 is height of people. And let's, so I'm being very careful here. We don't have anybody with red hair or with golden hair or with other colors of hair. So this data is all collected from, let's say, Indians, most of whom have, um, uh, have gray hair or they have black hair right or shades of gray okay uh, shades of gray and black basically some people may have slightly whitish hair also so what let's assume i've collected some data and each cross here let's assume represents my data okay so each of this each cross here represents a data point xi okay let's assume this is my data so one thing that you'll notice quickly is heights range a lot right between in this whole range you'll find your heights okay let me change the color so your spread your spread on the height axis is much more because what's happening here is or your variance because spread is nothing but variance right your variance of your data on the height axis is more but if you look here your variance or your spread your spread on the on the blackness on feature one is very low okay let's assume this is our data and we know that most indians have black hair okay let's just assume or almost very very black or slight small shades of gray now given this data set so this is my data set right this is my data set given this 2d data set suppose i want to convert it into 1d what is one of the good ways of converting it okay i would argue that if I have to convert this into 1D, right, I would basically take my feature 2 because the spread, so I, I would say if my data set is feature 1, feature 2, and if I have to create a new data set x dash, okay, which has to be one dimension, I would argue that I would just pick F2. I would just skip my whole F1 because the spread on F1 is very low, which means the variability so spread can be thought of as variability, okay? And spread is nothing but variance, right? Spread is a more English term. So which means since between one point and other point, since the variance is low or since the variability is low, if I have to skip one feature, if I'm forced to skip one feature, which, so which feature will I skip? Suppose I have F1 and F2, right? I have my F1 and I have my F2. If I have to skip one feature, which one would you skip? To, to represent this data by skipping which of these features are you losing less information since the spread is low here since we know that most people have black hair i can skip my feature one and keep my feature two because the spread here is much wider is much more higher the spread is more here if you see this if you see this spread 
right? They're much more widespread in this axis than on this axis. So if I'm forced to create, so this is my n cross two, right? If I if I have to create an n cross one, if I'm forced to go from two D to one D, what will I do? I'll just keep my f one. I'll, I'll keep my f two, right? I will just use my f two values if I'm forced to. So let's assume we humans hypothetically. Let's assume we humans can't visualize two-dimensional data. Let's just say, let's assume I can only visualize one-dimensional data. It might sound absurd, but just for this argument's sake, then what would I do? I would simply skip my whole F1. I would just keep my F2. So in such a case, my X, which was F1, F2, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth, I will transform this okay, to X dash, which is simply nothing but my F2 two here, one, two, so on and so forth. So what am I doing here? I am preserving, I am preserving the direction with, with maximum or maximal spread. Because spread, spread or to be more mathematical, more variance. Because more spread, there is more information which is useful, right? If I, if I have to do it, if I have to do it, if I have to go from two-dimensional data to one-dimensional data, what do I do? I will drop those features or I'll drop that feature which has least spread and I'll preserve or I'll keep those features which have high spread because spread is a measure of information. Those of you who are from electronics background and from who have studied ideas like entropy from applied math background would quickly understand this. For those of you who don't know it, it's okay. We will learn about uh, entropy and information when we learn decision trees later. But intuitively it makes sense, right? More spread means more information is there and hence we should preserve it. So the one, this example that we took is a very, very simple example. Let's take a slightly more complex example. Let's assume in this case, my X is a two dimensional data set, okay? And let's just assume that my data set has been column standardized. So what is column standardized mean? It means the mean on feature one equals to mean on feature two, and both of them are equal to zero. Similarly, the variance on feature one equals to variance on feature two, which is equal to one. Variance of standard deviation, you could, because square root of one is one, right? So it's perfectly okay. Okay, this is what column standardization means. We saw this in the previous uh, data pre-processing videos, right? So imagine if I'm given a data set like this, what does it visually look? Let's assume, let's just assume for argument's sake that my data set looks like this. These are my axes and let's assume each of them are my data points. Let's assume my data set looks like this. Okay, let's assume my data set looks like this. And this is my feature F1. This is my feature F2. Now, what is what is the spread on F1? Now, this is a two-dimensional data set, right? This is a two-dimensional data set. This is a two-dimensional data set. Now, I want to transform this data set into one-dimensional. Okay, here also. So, this case that we saw, this case that we saw is very simple, right? Because the spread is there uh, on F2 and the spread on F1 is very less. But now, let's go to a slightly tricky case. Now, if you take these data points, what is your spread on X1, on F1? Your spread on F1 is also fairly wide. Your spread on X2, on F2, sorry, on feature 2 is also fairly wide. Now, you can't drop either F1 or F2. You can't simply drop it. It's not that easy, right? Because there is, there is enough spread here. There is also enough spread on F1 axis. You can't simply drop F1 or F2. You have to find something smart. Okay, but if, if you go and observe or notice this, I'm just redrawing it here for simplicity. So let's assume the data looks like this, where each cross represents a data point. Okay, so it's, but if, if you notice, if, if you have noticed what's happening here is, there is this direction on which the spread is very wide. Okay, let me call this F1 dash. Okay, let's take one direction which is perpendicular to this. Let's call this F2 dash, right? Now, instead of dropping F1 or F2, what if, what if 
because if on this axis or on the in this in this direction there is a lot of spread right but in the direction perpendicular to it so which is this let's assume this is my f2 dash my f1 dash and f2 dash are perpendicular let's just say my f1 dash is perpendicular to my f2 dash okay now the spread on f2 dash my spread on f2 dash my spread on f2 dash is much much lesser than my spread on f1 dash right now if i can find if i can somehow find f1 dash and f2 dash okay and if i can if i can drop f2 dash okay suppose suppose let's assume i can suppose i want to find f1 dash and f2 dash okay and if i drop f2 dash and if i project all my points if i project my points if i project my x size onto f1 dash okay on onto this f1 dash which is where the variance is very very high then then i can successfully convert my 2d data into 1d data except that so you can think of this as a rotation of an axis right because instead of my f1 f2 being like this i've just rotated them i've rotated my f1 by some theta right i've just rotated my axis those of you who remember rotation of axis from your high school or undergrad days what am i doing my f1 dash f2 dash is also perpendicular my f1 and f2 are also perpendicular so what am i doing i'm simply rotating my f1 by some theta by same theta i'm also uh, rotating my f2 to create f2 dash right if i can somehow rotate this axis such that my f1 dash is in the direction of maximum variance right then then I, I can apply this simple methodology where if i find f1 dash f2 dash such that f1 dash has maximum spread okay then i can drop f2 dash and project all the xi's onto f1 dash um, and then uh, all the xi's all the xi's onto f1 dash to so as to do 2d to 1d projection now let's see let, let's see what it means let's let's try to understand what it means let's just go through it let, let's write it in english just to be clear so what do we want we want to find we want to find a direction f1 dash such that the variance the variance of xi's projected on to projected on to f1 dash is maximal i'm writing it in english because now i'll start writing it in math form in a while but it's important to to understand what we are trying to do in english okay so this is what we are trying to achieve geometrically so this was a simple example so our objective is to find this f1 dash where the direction is maximal so that i can drop my f2 dash and if i just project all my points onto this i get my maximum variance so what am i doing i'm literally rotating my axis i'm rotating my axis okay to find to find f1 dash with maximum variance with max variance and drop my f2 dash right this is the task that, that is at hand we'll see mathematically how to do it it's very very elegant 